I'm just back from Nutanix.next 2025, where the worst kept secret in the virtualization industry was finally announced. The big news is that Nutanix, the HCI or death company, is finally opening up and letting third-party storage be integrated into their stack. This is a massive change in course for Nutanix as a whole, but as always, the devil is in the details. Let's talk about it. This video is brought to you by Home Lab Gear. My home lab was a mess, so I designed and created a variety of different products to help me manage and protect all of my sensitive gear, and they're available to you too. Tackle the storage of your countless 3.5 inch mechanical drives, organize all of your random 2.5 inch consumer and expensive enterprise SSDs, protect all of your delicate NVMe SSDs, store all of your DDR DIMMs and those easy to misplace SODIMs, and collect and protect all of your expensive SFP transceivers. You can get all of these and more right now too, just head over to homelabgear.shop or check for a link in the description and get your home lab organized. Hey there home lovers, self hosters, IT pros, and engineers, Rich here. I had an opportunity to attend the Nutanix.next 2025 conference in Washington DC last week. .next is Nutanix's big industry get together similar to VMware Explorer, Microsoft Ignite, and so on. The big news at that conference was Nutanix's official announcement of its partnership with Pure Storage. Nutanix is officially beginning to allow disaggregated storage in its virtualization stack. While Nutanix has previously announced a similar agreement with Dell that allowed Nutanix users to utilize the disaggregated storage in PowerFlex, the partnership with Pure is different. Let's get through the technical details, and then at the end of the video, I'll give you my final thoughts. The new partnership with Nutanix and Pure Storage has some significant limitations that I think deserve as much visibility as the news itself. First off, as of right now, the only supported Pure Storage arrays allowed to be used with Nutanix are the X and XL product lines. So unfortunately, all of you C, E, and S array owners are out of luck. Also, as of right now, the only compute stacks that will allow disaggregation with pure storage will be from Dell, HPE, Cisco, and Lenovo. Noticeably missing here are any actual Nutanix NX chassis. I am baffled as to why Nutanix decided to exclude its NX product line from supporting disaggregation entirely. However, if I had to venture a guess, I'm sure it's partially a decision to help maintain their HCI mantra, and it gives the third-party hardware vendors something to differentiate themselves by. Typically, Nutanix software running on Nutanix servers is cheaper, so maybe this is the carrot to get customers to consider a third-party hardware stack. At the conference, I asked this question and received mixed responses as to officially why they decided not to support their gear in disaggregation, ranging from, oh, we will, to, no, we won't. So suffice to say, I didn't get a good feeling on if or when that will change. So as of right now, if you are a new tank shop running on NX gear and want to use your pure storage array, you're out of luck. Let's get nerdy here and talk about protocols. Nutanix has decided to support only NVMe over TCP as the one and only protocol for storage operations in the new disaggregation implementation. Speaking with Nutanix engineers, their decision was solely made around what's the fastest, most modern storage network protocol on the market at this time. I completely understand why they would choose the best of breed, fastest, most cutting edge storage protocol right out of the gate. It allows them to maintain the high IOPS performance that they're known for in their HCI stack and maintain their customers' expectations of performance. So let's talk about how they're implementing disaggregated storage specifically for pure storage. Each virtual machine running in Nutanix will essentially get its own dedicated provisioned virtual volume in the pure array that is completely self-contained. If you're familiar with Pure and VMware VVols, it's basically like that. The Pure Array manages those volumes and makes them available to whatever AHP host is running that workload. Suffice to say, they're not taking the traditional approach to shared storage where all hypervisors would equally access the same shared volume. It's very much having each VM in a dedicated volume with portability between the AHV hosts. There are a few more details I want to get through here before I get through to my final thoughts. Dell's PowerFlex was the first third-party vendor Nutanix offered disaggregation with. To be clear, the way Dell and Nutanix do disaggregation on PowerFlex is nothing like the way Pure and Nutanix are doing it. Dell's PowerFlex approach is really more of a kludge where they use the network HBAs in the compute nodes to mount virtual disks locally from the PowerFlex array itself, in effect tricking Nutanix and AHV into thinking the remote mounted disks are actually physically in the host. I've been told that in the future, that will change. Apparently Dell and Nutanix are working on changing that approach where Nutanix will be able to natively interact with the storage array in PowerFlex directly. I also asked about other storage 
vendors and what's next in terms of opening support. Nutanix was very tight-lipped about who the next storage vendor would be. However, I think it's fair to say that if you can read the Gartner Magic Quadrant for storage vendors, you can probably guess who will be next, assuming they support NVMe over TCP. All right, let's get to my final thoughts here because I have plenty. Let's start off with the good. I'm really, really happy to see Nutanix diversifying its architecture and disaggregating. I think it's the right decision for their customers because it brings a freedom of choice for people looking to migrate to Nutanix. And being locked into HCI only in a post VMware world is a bad idea. Good on you, keep it up. Now I'm gonna be more critical. This is not the great disaggregation event that I was personally hoping for. I really hoped that we'd be getting more of an open, vendor-neutral approach to third-party storage like VMware offers. What Nutanix is doing is not that. I'm disappointed at the scope and approach they're taking to disaggregation. It makes 100% sense that they would ink partnerships with big players in the space first. But at this time, it looks like every integration is a bespoke, unique implementation, and I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather have standardized approaches that all storage players can compete at. Supporting only NVMe over TCP is great for customers with the highest end performing systems. But what about iSCSI or even NFS? While I was at .next learning about their peer partnership, I saw a Nutanix customer visibly disappointed when he was told that his pure C array wasn't supported. You know damn well his all flash array has enough performance. Stop gatekeeping like that. Decisions like this frustrate me the most because it limits a customer's freedom of choice. What if you're an on-prem shop that doesn't need NVMe performance for storage? Why force them into buying HCI or an all NVMe pure array when they don't need it? I think the best thing they could have done is openly support a variety of storage protocols and leave the performance decision up to the customer. No special proprietary integrations for Dell or Pure or whoever's next Next, just offer standard storage protocols and let the customer decide. Next, I think it's an odd choice not to support disaggregation on Nutanix's own hardware. I don't know what their logic or reasons are, if it's internal politics or something else, but I don't like the fact you can't use disaggregation on their own hardware when we all know it can. It's well known that Nutanix doesn't mark up their own hardware costs when they sell their HCI stack to customers. They essentially just pass those costs on. This will always put the third-party hardware vendors at a disadvantage because those markups are how they make their money on their products. But my objective as a customer is to get the most out of my money, and this limits that. Again, I think this is a political or marketing decision to create diversification between the Dells, HPEs, Cisco's, and Lenovo's, and Nutanix itself, and I think that's dumb. All of that being said, I think Nutanix is on the right path. Start slow if you have to, make your partnerships along the way, but don't forget that the more freedom of choice you give to your customers, the more customers that will choose your products. I genuinely hope they make iSCSI and NFS available because that's what I use in my home lab. I don't have a pure array that does NVMe over TCP. But I do believe that if you give your customers the freedom of choice, you will be rewarded. And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. And if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to our YouTube members. You guys helped keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buying some of our swag. It'll help us keep making these videos. And now that you finished watching this video, how about checking out this place over here about the great virtualization videos we've done in the past. If you're looking for your next great enterprise virtualization platform, we can help.